Good morning to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, recording this while you're sleeping, hopefully most of you, and I'm going to publish it when you wake up, or whatever. So, wanted to do an update, Hurricane Outlook and discussion, I'm at the hotel in Gainesville, after a successful deployment of the new camera system, not 100% perfect, we had a couple of glitches that we need to fix, but that's what testing is all about, we use these events to do so. So, wanted to update you on all things related to the tropics. It's almost hurricane season in the Atlantic on a calendar. It is hurricane season in the Pacific, the Eastern Pacific, and nothing out there yet, but we had subtropical storm Alberto, which we'll talk about a little bit in just a moment. First, at the beginning of the week, and I was out working all day Monday in the Panhandle area, so I didn't get to go over any of this, so we will now. The Southern Oscillation Index, you know, I talk about this related to the ENSO state, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Uh, look at this, the daily contributor for the 28th of May was 3.92, the 90 day is up to 5.16, and the 30 day has come up from being negative. As you can see, it really dropped off, and now it's risen sharply. And the two are almost meeting here, and that's remarkable. That is not a signature of El Nino. Uh, it doesn't mean the Pacific is not warming, because it is. But, you know, this is not what we expect to see. There still are mixed signals uh, for El Nino taking place. So, SOI is certainly not cooperating. But if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Pacific, a good area of the Equatorial region has definitely warmed up from that La Nina state. There are a few pockets of fairly strong anomalies here and here and here and here. And I'm going to show you those on the subsurface in a minute, how they kind of poke up. And then as you get out towards the central Pacific here, it moderates more. But none of this is overwhelmingly warmer than average. Uh, and even this, what we call Pacific meridional mode, uh, where this area warms up relative to average more so. You know, yeah, there's still a lot of patches of these positive anomalies, but, you know, there's a lot of yellow in here as well, which indicates just slightly above normal. You know, we're not seeing a whole bunch of this orange and red where this is all just blazing. And I could show you maybe next week examples of when that was warmer. Why does that matter? Usually when this region is a lot warmer than normal, you have a very active eastern pacific season same thing with the atlantic when it's warm like this like we saw last year uh, the atlantic can be very active now i figure eventually the pacific will become quite active but i'm not convinced that the atlantic is going to be as quiet as some people are making it out to be and you know you look at the main development region here in the western part yeah, generally normal to slightly below average and then right off the coast of Africa, of course, this strong area of negative anomalies. Uh, and then this large continent-sized area of positive anomalies. There's the Gulf of Mexico, warmer than average, especially up near the shelf water region. And I think that, you know, the African easterly waves that come off here, they're still going to be robust. And if they don't develop here, they're going to develop over here. Right. And if they don't develop there, because this gets really busy and warm, then they'll make it into the eastern Pacific and the coast of Mexico, the Baja, and even the southwest United States is going to have to watch out. So there's going to be a hurricane season, obviously, and there are going to be impacts. Look at what Alberto did, uh, subtropical in its structure overall. And as we move into June and July, more activity will start to percolate, and we'll start to watch things like the Madden-Julian Oscillation and what different long-range forecasters and forecasts are saying, all right, because it's getting better where we can look out 5, 10, 15 days and see the pattern. And in some case, 20 to 30 days is the pattern getting ready to change that would support development. We're almost to the time where we need to start looking for that. A little bit more on the ENSO. This is something that Eric Webb at NC State uh, posted. This is the subsurface chart. I couldn't find it. And I'm on the road, so I've found it on Twitter. So I wanted to show you this. So these are the areas that were poking up in the surface chart. Remember I showed you that right over there? So those blue marks right there 
are corresponding to these areas. Well, it didn't quite work the way I wanted it. Those blue marks that I just showed you on the subsurface, that's where they are in reality up on the surface, how they poke through, so to speak. It's probably not the best way to put it, but uh, every time I go back to this page, the GIF animation starts over. Um, there we go. We'll freeze it there. So these are, you know, coming up to the surface, so it's warming in the east pack. But then you still have this large area that refuses to budge beyond the normal, right? It's just sitting there, right, smack in the middle. And then there's this little area of, you know, slightly positive. Uh, but really, this is the only area of anomalous warmth. And a lot has been made of these positive, you know, plus three or whatever. This is still... 50 to 100 meters below the surface. Uh, I'm not saying it won't be a warm inso event later in the year, but in time to shut down the Atlantic hurricane season, no. I don't think that's going to happen, and probably not going to have a big robust year like last year, thank goodness, but we're still going to have some impacts to deal with, and maybe closer to land as they get started, instead of these long-track hurricanes like Irma and Maria, we may not see those, and again, that's great, uh, but they may be closer to home as they start. Uh, so let's get rid of that tab. So what's up, what's up with uh, Alberto? This is the subtropical depression uh, advisory. 35 mile per hour winds, pressure's coming up, of course. It's filling in the pressure field as it moves over land. And if we look at the next several days, this is where it's headed. Into Canada. You don't see that very often into Canada with the remnants of this thing by Thursday. So there's probably going to be a pretty good swath of heavy precip up through this region. Nothing hopefully catastrophic or anything on that level, but just be aware, especially as you get into some of these hilly areas of Kentucky um, and you know parts of the hill country here in Alabama, Birmingham, northeast from there through Anniston, as examples, and even western Georgia, LaGrange, moving on towards, to some extent, Atlanta, a little bit of elevation there. And you know what happens when you have elevation and a lot of rainfall? It goes to the lowest point because of gravity, and you can have flash flooding. But look at that. When do you see a depression? I know it's post-tropical. Moving through Indiana, Michigan, and into southern Canada. How about that? Interesting. Um... Watches and warnings, this is related to Alberto all down through here. So keep that in mind. Busy day tomorrow, people returning home from the Memorial Day weekend. And the Appalachians here, trouble, you know, with all that heavy rain potentially. And still parts of eastern North Carolina still tapping in to all this moisture that was available as part of this pattern that came through this positive uh, phase, I say positive for development, of the Madden-Julian oscillation and everything just lined up and we almost got a purely tropical system. Again, that's academics, that's the the classification part of it to people in the path of it. It was, you know, like being in a tropical storm. They didn't know, oh, that feels, that's actually subtropical, honestly. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, it does in the science world, but for the real impacts, it doesn't. So looking at the radar and how that translates to everything, there's Alberto, and here's the heavier rainfall moving in parts of the Appalachians. So be mindful of that. Uh, just, you know, when you're out and about traveling, raining hard, slow down. Be careful out there. I certainly, I practice what I preach. You know, I had a few people that had to pass me because I'm going to go 50 instead of 60 when it's pouring down cats and dogs. And I'm telling you, they'll pass you. It's crazy, but, you know, Drive safe, you arrive safe. Uh, Mark's slogans. <laughs> so uh, at least the pattern is going to change eventually, and we'll have some good summertime weather returning. When is that going to happen? Let's take a look at the GFS here. Uh, 850 millibar level of the atmosphere, and we'll put it into motion. Oh, first of all, what's what? There's the signature of Alberto, the vorticity field of it. Not too intense, as you'd imagine. So just keep an eye on all these features. Well, that's the main one as the next seven days go by. Right here. So it moves on into southern Alabama, through Montgomery, up through Birmingham. James Spann and Joshua Johnson. Uh, Josh Johnson, I think of Joshua Johnson from NPR. 
Josh Johnson and I think he's in Montgomery. I hope so. Uh, they got you covered. You know those guys, and I'm sure there's others. I'm not. I just forget their names. But Span and Johnson, man, they're they're great, and I know them in person, so I'm a little biased. But this is the next week going by, and you notice, folks, good news. Nothing coming out of the tropics. No more Central American gyres that tighten up and spin up into something. Not happening. It's not there. And uh, some semblance of the Bermuda High trying to set in. Southerly flow is going to be muggy. You know, hot summer nights, lots of humidity. And that includes coming into the plains. And then look out here as we end May and get into June. Maybe an active severe weather pattern for Kansas parts of Oklahoma, and then the high plains, Nebraska, South and North Dakota, you never know. Hey, if our Patreon keeps growing the way it's been, maybe later down the road in June I can go out to the plains and try some things. I don't want to chase tornadoes, per se. There's a lot of people already doing that. I want to use these cameras we've got and do some interesting things. I'm going to talk about that on Friday, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but maybe I'll have an opportunity there. What is that? The weekend of June 2nd and 3rd, yeah, probably not, but maybe later in June. We'll see. I'm putting the cart in front of the horse. Uh, I'll talk about Friday in just a second. Hey, let me show you this. You waited through all my rambling here. A really neat time lapse from the Carabelle Beach Cam that I set up. Watch this. Look at that. That's Alberto. The spiral band's coming right on shore. Look at the flag, how it's blowing at the camera as we start. And then watch as the wind shifts. This is so cool. And you see the flag starting to turn? Isn't that neat? I mean, come on, that's cool. Is it a big deal? And do you, you know, get some kind of award for it? No. But I think it's neat as a weather geek to see the wind change with the cloud structure all lining up. You can't do that by just shooting video out of your windshield and trying to be famous. Uh, for some 10 second clip. I'm just saying this immersive technology and then look at the end of it. It's completely changed. I don't know what that is. 45 degrees straight on and then it's pointed the other way. Yeah, that's about 45 degrees, right? If I remember my math, it's just cool. So I'm going to put this on YouTube later and uh, you can watch it all you like and on our membership site and on our Patreon. All right. I'll put it on YouTube later for everybody. So what am I doing Friday? Well, Friday is the first day of hurricane season. So Friday evening, 7, 7.30, somewhere around there. I'm going to go live on YouTube from my home office, and we're going to have a really good time talking about hurricanes. And why do I say it like that? Mark, hurricanes are bad. How are we going to have a good time? We're going to have a good time talking about it because this whole idea of just being doom and gloom all the time uh, doesn't that's not that doesn't work you know it, admitting that it's almost like an AA meeting right um, admitting that we have a hurricane problem and then dealing with it in a rational manner and that sounds a little bit silly but it's true so why come in and say oh it's gonna be a bad season and here's all these indicators of bad 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 if I bombard you with negativity all the time it just makes you feel bad so we're going to have a good time talking about it. Informal, relaxed, ask me questions. I'm going to have the YouTube chat. I'm going to have our Patreon going, and I'm going to have our uh, Hurricane Track Insider. Everybody involved. We're one big family here interested in weather and specifically hurricanes. And then there's going to be some really neat things that we're going to do Friday night. Amazing stuff. And so you definitely want to tune in for that. Um, and then, you know, the uh, talk of what I want to do with the future of this support here, this crowdfunding, which is growing, there's a lot we can do. So tune in Friday, subscribe on YouTube, and then make sure you click the bell for notifications that when I go live or I post a video that you're notified and you can see what I have to say. All right. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I am Mark Studdeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for following along during Alberto. Uh, I'll be heading back home to North Carolina during the day Tuesday. And um, so no video Tuesday. This is it. You're looking at it. It's already Tuesday. Thanks for watching. We'll talk again on Wednesday.